Bacchaeus. Bacchaeus? There's a good chance he might not know this word. Imagine standing on a national stage with over one million people watching you on ESPN. And you get the word Bacchaeus. B A C C H I U S. Bacchaeus. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. So, how did he get it right? Turns out, it's a lot more than just memorization. To step inside the mind of an elite speller and figure out how they break down their words, we might need to back up a little. I have the language of origin. The Scripps National Spelling Bee is an iconic competition with over 11 million students from across the country competing against the dictionary. Ugh, the dreaded bell of inaccuracy. One wrong letter and you're out. What? They're all wrestling for the top prize of the title, the trophy, and, of course, $50,000. Since Scripps took over the B in 1941 with only 28 spellers, it's only gotten more and more competitive, and now 500 kids take the final stage. And once ESPN picked up coverage in 1994, that was it. Spellers were cemented as athletes. Correct. <laughs> because it's on ESPN, that must make it an athletic event, right? Well, I think that the word athlete goes back to a Greek word, which means a prize winner. And so uh, you can be an athlete in anything where you win a prize. That's Dr. Jacques Bailey, the 1980 National Spelling Bee champion. Hello, Dr. Bailey. Namaste, Dr. Bailey. Bonjour, Monsieur Bailey. Hello, Doc. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> And he's been the official pronouncer for the B since 2003. T-H-I-A, stick with you. Correct. And that's Shriram Hathwar, co-champion of the 2014 National Spelling Bee. And they both make a pretty compelling case on the athletic aptness of elite spellers across the country. Yeah, so in a sense, it's uh, a lot more cutthroat as a sport, in a sense, than say like basketball or soccer, whereas if your opponent scores a goal on you or makes a basket on you, then you can always kind of rebound. Whereas with spelling, if you make one mistake, you're done, you're out of the competition. Just like in basketball or soccer, there's a ton of preparation that goes into getting ready for the B. In Shriram's case, he studied 480,000 words for seven years, two hours a day, flipping through the 3,000 pages of the dictionary. But just reading through the dictionary isn't enough. One of the largest misconceptions is that it's all about memorization. So the thing about memorization, it's great if you get a word that you've seen. But you're not preparing for the word that you've already seen, you're preparing for the one you haven't seen. And for that one, memorization doesn't work. What Dr. Bailey is referring to is etymology, the study of the origin of words. English words are directly influenced by foreign languages. By tracing those origins, spellers can pick up on clues as to how those words are spelled. For example, using the winning word from the 2013 B. Canadal. Knowing that the word is German-derived Yiddish, he knows the word is more likely to start with a K than a C, based on the spelling patterns from that language. And he knows it will end in an E-L, like the German word pretzel. If you've tuned into the broadcast on ESPN, you might have noticed all the questions that the children ask after they approach the mic. Canado, may I have the language of fortune, please? Can you please repeat both pronunciations? May you give me all the information you have in this word, please? Another question they ask is, may I have the definition? Sure, it's helpful to make sure that you and the pronouncer are thinking of the same word. Numbnut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, numbnut. <laughs> but, there's also a strategy behind it as well. So for instance, the word blamange. This is a French pastry, and it's made of condensed milk. And with my knowledge of French roots, I know that manger is the word for to eat in French, and the word blanc is the word, uh, word for white. And even though white is never explicitly inside the definition of the word, I know that milk is white, and it's made of milk. So I can say, oh, it's something that you eat that is white. 
It only takes one piece of information from the many questions to unlock the spelling for that speller. We're looking for the words that defy the rules because we can't get a champion without them. Another reason for all the questions, routine. Some kids will go through every single question, not because they don't know the spelling, but because they're taking their time. Idiosyncratically, I, O, so they don't end up misspeaking and spelling the word wrong, even if they know the correct spelling. Q R S Z three quattro love him. F L D. So learning to slow down is extremely important. That's also the reason why kids type out the words on their legs, write them out on their hands, or any other physical movement they do. It's actually more of a stress reliever, I'd say. But uh, yeah, everybody has their own sort of memory recall technique. But I think especially when you're talking about like uh, typing or placard writing, it's more just to keep you in the moment. It all relates back to routine. What will bring them the most comfort so that they can do their best? But they can't take too much time. In front of each speller is a traffic light that changes colors to indicate how much time they have left. The second that traffic light turns red, the speller is no longer allowed to ask questions and must spell. And if the questions they already asked don't help them and they're running out of time? If nothing else fails, then it's almost like make a wild guess. <laughs> Negus. N-E-G-U-S, Negus. The spelling bee is incredibly impressive, especially with the amount of time and effort that goes into preparing. They have to win in their classroom, their district, and their state to advance to the big times. And even then, you still have to take a written test that tests you on more than just spelling. And depending on that, then you can make the Thursday finals. It's just uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of grit, and uh, if you have the talent and if you're lucky enough, then the prize will come. But just like with all major sports, just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not fun. So I think the kids are really energized by it and they really want each other to succeed. They, um, they try to help each other. Uh, ho they hope that the other kids get the word right. We actually are rooting for each other and we are competing against the dictionary. That is correct. Congratulations, Amanda. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And ring the bell below, that way you're notified whenever we post a new video.